Trigger warning, this episode contains graphic descriptions of violence, gore, some sexually suggestive content, and for some reason, a blend of all of them. Remember, cringe is also pain. And with that, I'm Keegan, and this is a bunch of gamers. This is our 178th episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. Rank and pain. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle, also known as Guards the Low. He's a Philodox of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Cora. She's an Aruna in the Geta Fenris. Hi, I'm Adam. I play Mark Guides the Fallen, and he's a third of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, Speaks in Sweet Whispers. He is a third of the Silent Striders. Hello, my name is Riley, and I am playing Dimitri Howls in Memory, Lupus Galliard of the Bonars. Hi, my name is George. I am playing William Groves Matrices. He is a, a rune of the Glasswalkers. Last time, the packs went through various stage. Last time, the packs entered the dream of Constance, Zeb's sister who was having nightmares of skinning Zeb. After Constance woke up, Dimitri then decided to enter the dreams of Natalie, where he discovered that she had taken on the mantle of calling herself Samuel Haight and had claimed to have killed the real Samuel Haight back at the Valkenberg Foundation in Wyoming. Unable to follow right away as an anthrax attack rocked Kansas City, the Pax went in and saved Constance using gifts and taking her out of the hospital. The Pax then have returned to Sacred Stone in an attempt to gather as much information as possible. Then the moots began and Mark and Zeb have now challenged for their Athro and Elder challenge respectively. The moot continued and finally wound down and it is the next morning. And so the moot ends. It is the next day as the Garu have finished the revel as you all wake up sore naked in the woods after shifting into Krynos and launching in all directions looking for anything to destroy. As everyone starts to recollect around the Sept and Garu start leaving for various challenges and things like that. Kyle, during the two weeks, you had sent a spirit to try and find young Sven, and a wolf spirit reappears. It is a red wolf spirit, and the red wolf spirit approaches and gives a nod and a bit of a howl. His body language neutral and his tail even. Uh, Kyle will transform into lupus if he's not already. Give off a more welcoming body language than the other wolf did. All right. The spirit nods and lets you know that the child is currently at the Sept of Desert Snow. I will thank the spirit uh, and be a little stoked because we like them and we know where that is. And it's not far. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, And I will give the spirit a gnosis. Excellent. William, your cell phone is acting a bit strange. I'll go ahead and diagnose what's going on. So the electronics, the physical part of it, if I could get a uh, just a quick wits, uh, wits crafts or wits, uh, wits computers. Okay, (laughs) I was going to say my uh, crafts is not that high. That's for software. It'll be computers for the electrical engineering part. It's technology. It's the same thing. All right. So diff six. All right. Doing a cursory diagnosis. There is nothing particularly wrong with your phone physically. It seems that there's something wrong with the awakened spirit within it. I will find Zeb to see if we can communicate with the spirit. You can normally, since it's a fetish of yours. You'll just have to do a Gnosis roll to try and connect with it. Then I will do that. All right. Uh, Because you're in Uh. the... uh, And so it's going to be... Diff, I believe, uh, for the cell phone, it is Diff uh, 5. Okay. All right. As you catch the echoes of the spirit speaking, it's speaking rapidly over and over again. It is almost here. 
The new world will be born. The new world? Cyber City grows. It expands. The crib is almost ready. What's about to be born? The machine. It's about to awaken. Soon. Well, with this awakening, will you be leaving the cell phone? No, no. I will be improved. We will be better. A new world is born. Better world. And what is coming with this world for you? Order. Speed. Efficiency. A world full of connection. Instantaneous conversation. Communication. The machine grows so powerful. Perhaps even soon, Cyber City will start to manifest in the penumbra. That would be something. As you hear kind of a song playing from it, it's an interesting song. It's the notes kind of constantly play. There's a rhythmic nature to it. Can I get a willpower roll? Diff 8, please. Yep. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. You are able to block it out, but it feels very enticing. You lose one point of willpower, or spend one point of willpower. Okay. As the spirit, you start to disconnect from the spirit directly as the song fades from your mind. I will quickly find the group if they are still here. Kyle and Cora are getting their packs ready. Mark is getting ready to start heading heading out uh, for his challenge, I assume. That and is correct. Zeb is about to do the same. And Dimitri is also just hanging around. Probably going to go see the kid, but who knows with that little rapscallion. Well, guys... I just had a quick conversation with the spirit in my phone. Um, it seems Cyber City is growing larger and larger and might be materializing in the penumbra soon. The machine is about to be born. And before, I would have been happy with this growth. But now, not so much. What machine? What are you talking about? It is the spirit of all technology. So if you can think back to any invention, the machine has either birthed it or incorporated it into its being. And the future inventions, future tools, future technology, the machine is birthing it now as we speak. Didn't we see a vision of this when you went to go and help Heatseeker? I believe we We had. did. I, I do remember that. But the machine was still slumbering. At the time. I can only imagine the cataclysmic effect of the cyber realm crashing into the penumbra like that. It would certainly change the nature of the gauntlet and weaver sway over how we operate in an increasingly negative way. What else did you experience? The song. There, there's a weaver song that is sung. And if I remember correctly, that was what put um, Heat Seeker... It's the yeah. drone song, right? It's anyone that falls to the weaver hears that song. Yeah, the one the, song. The cyber dog. Pretty troubling to me when you're about as far away from that as possible and you can hear the song now from your device. And I suppose any device. Well, as long as I'm trying to connect with the spirit, as long as I use it as its physical intention, I don't. I haven't heard it yet. But that could change in a matter of months. If they cross into the penumbra, yeah. I guess it's a when, not an if. Yeah, we might, we might have to give up our headpieces, our earpieces. Might be giving up a lot more than that. Yeah, that's worth a warning to other glasswalkers and other guru here that that song can be heard via Weaver spirits within yeah. devices, and that that call might become greater and greater for technologically aligned Garu in addition to just problems for people that are trying to travel through the cyber realm or otherwise. So we will certainly warn people of it. I wanted to let you guys know first, and then I was going to make that call to Steel Mountain and any other Glasswalker contacts that I have. All right. So you start calling around your Glasswalker contacts while everyone else kind of starts doing some stuff. Uh, there is a direct moon bridge to Desert Snow from Sacred Stone. We should take that then. So, Dimitri, are you going with them to see Sven? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's go visit Sven. Little meatball. 
All right. And Zeb, you're going to try and go as far east as possible? Right. There's there's a couple of things I'd like to do before I leave. First off, if there's a younger pack that's 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 here that I can that I can charge with a task, and that task would be to find find out any information about what it would take to put the great machine, you know, back into slumber, or at least have it slumber to buy us more time. And if they can go out and find that information for me. Um, okay. And the second thing would be, um, I would have probably asked questions amongst older brother very discreetly about the Bane in particular, if there was anything worth knowing. Um, but if they don't know anything other than the fact this thing exists, that's fine. Um, and then the third thing is, I would have gone out and shoplifted another action figure from Meatball and given it to Kyle. Because I can't be there, I might as well give a gift. All right, for additional information on the Bane, please roll me Charisma Investigation, Diff 8. All because right. you had to deal with all the other Sept ceremonies. All right, so you gained a little bit of insight in that this spirit is a pain spirit that has merged with a disease spirit to some degree, has taken on the purview of disease and is affiliated with diseases that cause excruciating bodily pain. Awesome, thank you. All right. And Mark, will you be just walking? Yeah, I have resources, so I could probably take like a bus as far yeah. east as I could and then walk to the field. Sure. Uh, what's your rage? My current rage is, oof, five. All right, give me a roll. It is diff uh, diff seven for your rank. Okay. As you are cramped with people, all right, you manage to keep control. Okay. As you get to the edge of town and start heading out, Zeb, the closest sept getting out of there or getting into the uh, to that area would probably be. Uh, Sept of the Winter Hills, which is Younger Brother in North Dakota, as Steel Mountain's gone, Thunderclap is in Texas, and Unified Heart is in the opposite direction you want to go. All right, or so we weren't to, connect- Or you could go to Five Mirrors. I'm sorry, Five Mirrors is also possible. Right, so, okay, so we, we, okay, that's right, because we traveled overland to be able to get to that, that Bonar Sept in West yep. Virginia. We didn't take a moon bridge there. Okay, yep. got it. All right. All right, yeah, um, you know, from five mirrors. I mean, since Zeb's traveling alone, I mean, he can he can use his gifts by himself and travel at 80 miles an hour and just run through the Umbra to get there. There you go. Uh, moving through the Umbra, though, because uh, the moon paths are dangerous during the half moon, I need you to roll Perception Occult Diff 6 to find the appropriate paths. All right. You do not come across any danger on your journey. The main group, you guys enter Desert Snow and are greeted by the gatekeeper, Words of Granite, as you, the three-eyed guru approaches you. Welcome back. It has been some time. Thank you. It's good to see you again. I have a sneaking suspicion that I know why you are here. You'd be right. Could you there... uh, point us in that direction? Yes, they're on the northern end of the Baan, that way. The silver pack is laying close with the child and trying to teach them. They have even petitioned for our Master of Right to help teach some of the stories of our people. One actually petitioned for uh, Sing's old songs, despite the Fianna's disagreement to teach some of the stories of older brother. I'm gladdened to hear that. But the child seems well. Thank you for the news. That is a weight off my shoulders. You did stand before the nation and defended their life. So that does seem like something that would be important to you, yes? (laughs) I suppose that does make it obvious. But come, this way. I'll show you. Thank you. Mark, you get to the wind-swept plains of eastern Colorado, and it's just as miserable as everyone says. Yes. 
<laughs> gusts that start there. blowing you, your clothes sticking to your body as if you were drenched in water. So, the first step will be to summon a spirit of fire. Indeed. Uh, and since because I'm in the real world, I have to pierce the gauntlet first, don't I? Yep, so you'll have to roll okay. Gnosis first, and it is diff six. No, it's a uh, yeah, it's diff six here. Okay, rolling that. All right. All right. Your call reaches out across the gauntlet, and now we need the main roll, which was. And what kind of uh, fire spirit are you summoning? I'd like to summon a jaggling. Okay. Ooh. All right. Comes eventually. Yes, so <laughs> you start kind of chanting, you do your best to kind of draw in the spirit, and after about, oh, well over an hour, the spirit arrives. As it comes up, it is in the shape of swirling cinders and blasts of flames. I am runs with the wind. Why do you call me, wretched child? Mark will kind of keep his meditative stance, I guess, that he was in and offer the spirit a gnosis as apology for the uh, ritual. I'm sorry, spirit, for the, the, the quality of this summoning. The wind, it hinders my words for you to hear. Here, here's Gnosis to feed yourself to create more. The wind is my ally. As he absorbs the, fi- the the Gnosis and you see it burn within him and there's a flare, his eyes glaring. Then speak! You prattle on like the earth, slow and meticulous. Then I shall speak. Spirit, I come to make a pact. What is the pact? Spirit, my pact is that we take a walk across this field without you burning it. Just this field, however. If you journey with me further north, there are operations that are disrupting other spirits. But I feel with your great power, you'd be able to show an example of these disruptors. And how far is it? How much? How far must I not burn after this field? After I walk upon it? How much must I wait? I am not a patient spirit. I run with the wind. And you ask me not to run with it. As the sparks start to, like, fly up. I have thought of this as well, spirit. Do not concern yourself. For upon our little jaunts here in the field, I shall take you upon myself, and I shall run as fast as I can to where we need to be. You shall burn me. Burn your flesh? I am of the Garu Nation. This is very strange, I'm sure. But you will have my flesh to sate your thirst. I will try my best to carry you as this burden, but I want you to show your power. If you can carry me the whole time, then so be it. You will be able to run, but I will go in deep. Do you understand? I do. Deep will my conviction have to be, and deep it will. Go to the bush near you, on the edge of the field, and you will breathe in my cinders. Mark will do as such, and he will transform into Krynos. Okay and give a big inhale. As the flames go in and they go into your body and you feel the fire in your lungs and your shoulders immediately ignite, you now must make, at, because of your already fucked up lungs, a diff eight stamina athletics roll and you must gain a cumulative 10 successes to make this run happen to succeed the run. Every turn on top of that, you will have to make a normal soak roll where you will be taking three levels of aggravated damage. On the stamina athletic checks, would I be able to use willpower to get at least one success? You can, yes. Okay, okay. I will do this. And if you botch, you trip. And then you must, you lose your momentum and you will lose five successes from the pool. Okay. Okay. Woo! All right, do I need to make this roll right now? Yep, so it is now... Okay. We're going to do the first, the stamina athletics, diff eight. And then we'll just assume a plus one on this because I'm going to spend the willpower. And willpower. Good call. Zero successes as you're like, oh, wow, this hurts. Uh... (laughs) Mark will do, like, I guess the heroic knee and put a palm down, like... (gasps) 
Yep, like, like as, big, as you're, you feel not just your fur bubbling, but your very flesh, and now you must roll stamina, diff six. Oh no, okay. it's a full emulation, so it's diff eight. Okay, stamina, cryosporm. Ugh. So you take two points of ag. Ugh. Next, st okay. next stamina athletics. If it was okay. easy, everyone would be athro. Exactly. <laughs> stamina athletics. Assume plus one. Two All successes. Right, two. Now you gotta make another stamina roll while your ass is on fire. Okay. I can just yep. remember these two. rolls. So that's seven. Oh! Ooh. Well, you can't this... botch soak rolls at least. Yeah. So you do take three ag though, as your you actually feel like your eyes starting to melt a little bit, as your vision starting to get blurry. Your nose only smells uh, you, and okay. the uh, the crispy mix of gamey long pig. Well, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Remember, it's stamina athletics for this one. Uh, do you want to activate resist pain? Yes, I do. I thought you might. So, <laughs> so we'll spend a willpower for that. So no, no, uh, no penalties. Okay. All right, that's three successes. So you're halfway successes. there. You're halfway oh there. Boy. Now it's another right. regular soak roll. Seven stamina. Uh, diff. Do you have yeah. no athletics, Sig? I have three athletics and four stamina. Oh, In hold Krinos, on. I've been, yeah. I, I've been rolling these wrong. So, well, well, so roll the extra three for you, this next roll, but yeah. uh, we won't retroactively take care of the others just to keep things moving along. That's, oh, that's on me. I'm a foolish, foolish man. Okay. So just roll three dice real quick, and we're gonna add that to the other roll. Okay, roll three. Yep. Uh, roll. Make it diff six just to make up for this. Only these three at diff six to make up for the previous forgotten rolls. Okay. Another two successes. Okay, so we're at five seven. now. Uh, we are at seven total. Oh, okay, seven successes. Seven successes total, but now you've got to. Well, yeah, total because it's a cumulative ten. So you need three yeah, more successes, okay. but you do need to make a stamina roll right now because your ass is on fire. Yep. All right, one ag. Damn. And now, hopefully, this is the last roll. Working hope. Oh. Three successes, but you still got to do the stamina roll. Yep. Okay, I am down to my last willpower. Yep. And then this is... Soak. Soak. Ugh. So one egg. I am crippled. <laughs> All right, as you land, you collapse, and the spirit comes out of you. There we are, spirit. Ugh. Intruders on your power, on your wind, then I shall burn. Run. Mark's gonna crawl. <laughs> As the flames start to spread outside of the field, but Mark has succeeded at his rank challenge, as he allowed the spirit to not violate its ban. All right, Zeb, after three days, you do reach uh, West Virginia, asking, uh, could I get another charisma investigation as you're asking various Garu? Uh, we'll do diff seven. So you gain some more information. You know that Blood of the Open Sore is in Elkins, West Virginia, specifically. That area has a lot of factory farms. That Blood of the Open Sore is a jaggling, but is on the cusp of reaching the power of a totem avatar. It seems likely that the spirit's ban is related to causing pain, as the spirit has never given gifts, even to spirals, that does not inflict horrifying pain to those who received it. Okay. Brutal. We're going to go back yeah. to the main group real quick again, mm -hmm. as... There's Sven listening as he turns. He sees you all, and you see a little glisten in his little Krinos eyes as he launches forward on all fours, yelling Papa's and Mama. Hey, Sven. As you get tackled by a Krinos. <laughs> Boom! As you land and he squeezes you, you feel your ribs starting to creak. It's good to see you. Oh, I missed you. Missed all of you. 
Oh, we missed you too. That's why we came to visit. Wanted to check on you, see how you're doing. <sighs> Good. I'm learning more. I've learned more about the great river serpent of my father's tribe. How did you like that? It was very interesting, and I've learned much. Soon we are to go to the Sept of the Sentinel to learn of my mother's tribe. Well, plans might have to change a little bit. We'll talk to your to the other Garu, and we'll let them know what happened. Why? What happened? Well, we all actually just had to come back from there. Uh, uh, we cl- we had to close the Sept. So we'll ta- we'll talk more about it when everyone is together. But you were having a lesson, right? What were you learning about? I learned of the hidden secrets and other things. I have learned of the tribe and the wormcomers. I have learned also of how River Spirit allowed their tribe to see into the dark places and turn the enemy against themselves that venom sometimes strikes deep, and it can be hidden, and that River Serpent is mistrusted because he resembles the Great Dragon. But because of that, we have weapons that, or I should say the tribe has weapons that can vanquish. To to interrupt, I'm sorry. Is he telling us secrets right now? Like, is he about to? Okay. Uh, It looks like he's getting close, but yeah. Before that happens, Kyle will interrupt him. Okay. Uh, just g- give me the thumbs up or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you get. He's getting close, so Kyle's probably like, whoop, 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 whoop. hey, hey, remember, just because you trust and love us doesn't mean that you can tell us all of those secrets, though. Yes. Sorry. It's all right. Those are secrets for this tribe. I've been learning. I've been fighting. Oh, that's impressive. What did you fight? I fought my red talon mentor how'd that go he left me this as he lifts and there's this massive scar on the side of his body wow what did you think when that happened it hurt but that's okay because i bit his ear and tore a chunk off your mother would be so proud of you it is a glorious scar they howled my praises said that i was willing to fight even when hurt good it sounds like you're doing some impressing. Yeah? Yeah. Good. As his <laughs> eyes then immediately turn and it locks onto the toy that Zeb had given Kyle. From Papa Zeb. As he kind of does like this squeal of enjoyment, but it sounds odd from the guttural voice of a full Krynos. As he grabs, pulls it in, and squeezes it to him. Uh, don't break it, but Papa Zeb thought you'd like that. I do. I do. Tell Papa Zed thank you. Of course. Good manners. He's off on his rank challenge to become an elder. Yes, he is. An elder? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. And Papa Mark is working on becoming an Athro. Wow. That's... that's amazing. I can't believe they're both so high rank now. They've done a lot of work, huh? Yeah. I mean, if Papa Mark can be an Athro, so can I. That's right. Yes, you can. Mark is like walking back and he's just feeling a twitch at his ear and he's scratching it while coughing up just like brimstone still like. (laughs) He takes another point of aggravated damage from that fucking burn. (laughs) You absolutely can, Sven. You'll get there someday. Thank you. Yeah, I can't wait. You've already gotten so much stronger. Yeah, I'm going to be... A great Arun, just like Mama Cora. Really? Just like me? I don't know. She'll she'll wink and whisper. <laughs> and then I'll be great like Papa William, too. He is great, isn't he? He's pretty strong, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think we need to tell the others about the bad news that we have? As he nods. Good choice. I'll show you. As he grabs your hand and goes, come on. We'll follow after. Meanwhile, a couple days in the future. Zeb? <laughs> I guess we'll look for the places where there'd be, yeah, in this town or wherever where we'd see localized disease and pain, nursing home, hospital, trailer park, the low income, wherever. Just a place where I know they're suffering to be. So, 
and you do find it, but you find it at the factory farms. The okay. huge swell of antibiotics have gotten into the groundwater here, and it seems that new diseases have been popping up on some of the cattle farms to where they've been killing whole, I guess you call them herds, but they're really just cows in cages of these horrid, like, hyper-painful wounds that cause the, the cows so much pain. They do, in, in fact, try and bite their owners in an attempt to relieve it, with pustules growing under the teeth and starting to push the teeth up and out of the jaw and a kind of rot in the jaw jawbone, looking similar to fossy jaw, but with bacteria alone eating through the bone and ligaments and muscles. Well, that's good and horrifying. All right. I mean, Zeb will have stayed in the Umbra, probably just peeking into the physical world on occasion. So let's go and see where this Bane's lair might be, and he'll kind of sneak toward it. All right. As you get to the largest factory farm, it's on private land, though they lease the building from a larger corporate entity. You see the bloated spirit there, its body twisting, covered in sores, the sores having needles coming out and springing like odd insectoid proboscis as it turns and it looks at you its eyes kind of looking like cracked glass as it kind of gives this big twisted smile with shattered teeth and blood and pus dripping from the gums all right uh zeb will actually just walk forward and he'll kind of dance a little bit like a crooner and uh, he'll sing you're just too good to be true can't take my eye off of you you'd be like heaven to touch i want to hold you so much at last our, our long last our love has arrived oh can't take my eyes off of you and he'll just move forward toward this creature uh charisma performance i'll give you diff five for that rendition though you have impressed the spirit enough to where they do not attack you right away the uh arms kind of crack you it almost sounds like his bones are made of glass as he hooks a hand on part of the rusted uh hinges of the barn door that he is in and who are you little mortal oh my sweet one my name is zeb beautiful zebulon they call me take a look at this face my dear one, you'll see this smile looks out of place. If you look closer, it's easy to trace the tracks of my tears. Having been away for you for so long, the pain coursing through my body. Don't let these scars deceive you. The bleeding and the pain is still there, never ending. You do look delectable. Perhaps a kiss for one as beautiful as you. As he kind of smiles and his long tongue kind of comes out inky and barbed. Give me some sugar, sweet talker. Um, Zeb will like kind of play hard to get it first. Like, bashful. Oh my. The night we met, I knew I needed you so. And if I had the chance, I'd never let you go. Won't you say you love me? I'll make you so proud of me. We'll make them turn their heads every place they go. And Zeb will give like the demure, like, kiss. Okay. As you give the demure kiss, you are now at a minus two uh, penalty of just pain. No, no wound penalties as blisters sure. form on your lips and start to ooze. Shrieking. Perhaps I can give you more. Yes? Oh, I've never felt so alive. I've never felt these things course through me before. I wish I had owned love like this. Oh, I've been so lonely on an island, all my own without you. But now that I'm here after so much searching, so much that you've done, your love spread to so many that can't appreciate it. The idea that people would say anything but adorating, you know, adoring words for what you show them to be. For this is being alive. 
I've never felt more alive to this pain before. I needed it the way I need you. All right. Do another uh, charisma performance roll, but with the two penalty, as you are in excruciating agony. Is there a way to... Can I, can I actually spend willpower to ignore wound penalties or no? You can That's for the turn. I will, I will do that for the turn, please. Okay. Different diff or same diff? Uh, uh, with, gonna, with the wound penalties. We'll go up to diff six. Okay. But with the role playing, you know, I'll give you a slightly lower diff. Okay. All right. So six as being the lower diff? Correct. Okay. If you need me, let me run my tongue over you. Let me give you shores of my affection. Let me show you what it is to be loved by pain until you think of it as pleasure. Your bones rotting away, but my love's embrace all over you. Like an old man eating soup. Uh, <clears throat> Zeb will kind of sidestep this just for a moment. You know what I saw out there that was just truly disappointing? Somebody out there praying, Oh Lord, spare what I have here, and I'll do whatever you need me to do. Oh, please. Begging for mercy, the lowest form of faith, the final, the final readout of the desperate and the pathetic. What I admire, what I admire about you and what you've shown is conviction, believing that the pain keeps you alive. You embrace that to know that's what you've bestowed upon me. I allowed these scars to grow and I should have known. That I needed to continue to bleed. It means something to know that we're connected, doesn't it? It means something to have this course through you. Yes. Oh, your blood is like milk. I shall lap it up, drop by drop, sensual in its entirety, until I rub my tongue upon the quick. This is the grossest thing I've ever done. I hope my children never hear it. Oh, I will send it to them on their graduation. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, kids. Congratulations, kid. Your dad's a fucking where... freak. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite episode is where dad gets licked to death by an incarnate of pain. <laughs> I must know, my love, if we are to spend my short existence with you. How did you come here? What made you so glorious to behold? I must know with my last breath that I have given everything to you whom I've dreamed about for so long, now made form here before me. Yes, my little lover. I will take you because I wish to become an avatar of Seraphugue. Walk, bring disease, bring pain. So there is nothing but the apathy of your bed and the sores. Isn't it beautiful? Even the sheets lap at their wounds and the pus runs into the mattress. And the kiss of me, mm. all the way down to the throat and the belly. Zeb will actually kind of tear at his flesh a little bit to bleed seductively. He will act as if he is titillated by this language from this from this beast. Um, but follow up with, I've heard the story, and he'll. I mean, of course, like pushing his body forward now with his own blood on it. Um, I have heard the story of how you brought disease and pain together, but no one could do this justice. I must hear it from you, my beautiful one. Regale me with your tales. Wither away any resistance I have to your passion. Give me one more roll. I'm going to make a diff seven as you're doing great role playing, but it is harder to pull out the secret. It is, it is fucking rough. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, In and out of character. Yeah. Charisma. It, it is. With the penalty. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and I, okay, can I spend another willpower to ignore wound penalties or no? You can. All right, I it's will. Per turn. All right, cool. God damn, what a roll! I walk, bringing pain, showing wounds to keep those un- to make sure that they knew that they were still alive. But then I saw her. She was pain too, and we kissed. And we merged tranquilly, surely, until we were one being. Then I saw this place, endless suffering, endless pain, and so many strange ways to try and keep the pain at bay without dealing with the root cause. So, I crafted something I gave him for you to see this lover, this Garu, who I shall nibble and kiss with sores and creaking bones, that I cannot give anything that does not cause pain, but the love of it entices me, and I wish to entice you further. Come to my embrace, let me rub you, hold you, twist your scars, and make them scream like ecstasy. For if you love pain as much as you claim, every pore will be a mouse screaming to my ark, and we shall be lovers. Until he just rises and you are spent, but in endless ecstasy until the end. I want to clarify one thing, because it's still, I mean, it's going to be hard to understand you and understand them, but if Zeb could pick it up, and it was, um, they found another when it came to one that experienced endless pain, and when they joined, the realization was, that people would treat their pain and not understand the root cause of that pain. Yes, something like okay. that. Uh, okay. That's why he got drawn to the factory farm specifically. Right, right. This is both the grossest and coolest thing I've ever done. Oh, how you seduce me. Oh, how I can no longer hold myself back from adoring you. But you speak to me something so true, truer than the bonds of the flesh. Something deep down that makes me just melt for you now, my love. People don't understand their pain. They don't understand why the pain is there as a reminder. They don't choose to face their pain. They insult pain. They would turn away and hide from it. The worst of the worst refuse to know what their pain means, what their pain guides them toward, what their pain makes them do and they would hide behind it, shameful. But you show me here, pain lets you know you're alive. It lets us survive. It lets us know what must be done. Surely it is glorious to die, but pain? Pain is what people fear. Pain is what they dread. Pain is what makes the stalwart weaken. Pain is truly what we must overcome. Easy to die less to embrace this as one survivor to another i know this well it takes much to face it much to overcome much to know that it must remain for scars aren't enough what do you propose lover you entice me as his hand reaches up and the little sores grow little mouths as they bite and gnaw at your cheek as he gently caresses and a steady stream of blood drips down your cheek and chin. That's just so disgusting. Yeah. We got this we got this gross stuff after after uh after Mark's eyes melted, so we're really kinda of 0 for two here, aren't you? Um God, this is legit like something straight out of like a Warhammer forty K supplement like oh. or flavor like it's i don't, I don't know I if it's the it. greatest the greatest insult or the greatest praise i can receive in this case yes yes <laughs> i propose an understanding the world is ending 
which means the end of pain, which means the end, the end of knowledge and the end of understanding. But those are merely words. Show me your pain, my love. Share your pain with me, your real pain, my sweet, for we may be bonded forever. Let me know, let me know it. Let me love you for it, and I will share mine with you. <sighs> Lover, I can show you. Let me show you, please. As the spirit looks bashful for a moment, as he grabs his ear and starts to pull it like a zipper as it streams across his face and blood drips down as he pulls along and his jaw drops down and you see the wounds and the festering and the old wounds of infection to show that the wound must be cleaned, perhaps an original more Gaian purpose to this pain as he continues to zip and you see the ribs showing carved with glyphs of the worm as he peels back the skin and it falls back like a robe the twisted genitals of half ragged flesh swinging and he goes come to me lover and I shall embrace you alright so he's shown now that outer form is dropped with the deeper kind of diseased form that's there and it would appear is can I have an occult roll just to better understand what Zeb is looking at? Yes, you may. Intelligence right. occult, please. All right. Difficulty, sir. Go with seven. So it looks like this was the, like, at least before becoming a full disease pain spirit, that this was the pain of a wound and that the spirit was like the normal pain an animal would feel to know to run its arm under cool, soothing water to try and get infections out. The pain that indicated that a wound needed to be cleaned so that it is pain as a lesson before it had been twisted into this strange amalgamation of horrid disease and pain spirit. The glyphs on its bones seem to represent the story of the disease spirit it had embraced and was tempted by to become a bane itself. And that... It is enticed by you enough that if you can perform a successful charisma stealth check, you could potentially perform the rite of cleansing upon the spirit while playing coy and then make a new deal with it to change its very nature. All right. Zeb will actually, I mean, he's already kind of rended his flesh open. What little, like, things were covering him aren't there. So he will, again, kind of just bear out the fact, scars from, you know, top to bottom, hands open as he walks through, and I will attempt that roll. Charisma Stealth. Charisma Stealth. I would like to use my patron, bonus, patron bonuses then for this. Okay. Okay. What's the base diff? The base diff was eight. Okay. You succeed. Now you can perform the rite of cleansing. Stealthily. Stealthily, Stealthily. performing the rite of Yep. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> oh man. Um, 50, Fifty Shades of Garu going on right here. Well, hey, you know, it's uh, they're not going to make it. You know, it's not supposed to be easy. Okay. As he starts to scream, he lands. You see, kind of like the wound starting to close, and like the little metal piece pieces dropping, like he's shedding hair as he's screaming and clasping as the runes on the bones start to, or the glyphs on the bones start to burn away as he's looking what have you done what is this what have you done to me my dearest love i'm returning to you what you could be what you should be and what we need in our most desperate hour the one that would close wounds with a reminder of wisdom the one that would impugn its followers with the directive to remember the pain of others, to have empathy and understanding, to do more than just blindly serve, to serve with conviction and meaning in the darkest and most harrowing times like you have, my love, like you have. Then, my love, I ask something, a deal, a chiminage, to seal it 
and keep the darkness off me for forever as it burns away and tries to reclaim me. Name it, my love. We are one here now. You must always feel pain in the future. You must never spend your will to hide it, and you must never take gifts to erode it. For as you said, the pain shows you where the wound is and how to heal. Healing is fine, but you must feel the pain. Seal that with a kiss, my love, and it is yours. You honor me. So, and Zeb will go, and I mean, it's like still like disgusting, right? I mean, it's only sl slightly better than before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Zeb will go and kiss and embrace. And you kiss. There is this horrid, agonizing minus five penalty, but the spirit's body becomes more, less of terror and more like a being covered, shimmering between animals and people of wounds with slight red on the edges as he speaks and goes, or they speak and go, and so it is done, beloved. You have redeemed me and you have embraced the pain. I wish I could give you more and give you relief, but that is not within my purview. So the kiss is all that is there and hopefully the memories of our time. What will you call me, beloved? The ward of painful memory. And so it is done. And so after another Five, six days of travel, you return. The Fomori's Bane were, and Mark even were able to get to Desert Snow and spend some more time with Sven, as he enjoys, as Sven was checking out all the various new burn scars on Mark as he was regenerating. And so time goes on, and on December 31st, the Cleoth approached Zeb. The ones I sent out? Yep. Happy New Year, friends. What do you bring me? The, we now know what was about to awaken the machine, but it's too late. Go on. MIT just announced they've created the first true artificial intelligence, and that corresponded with the awakening of the machine, and now a piece of Cyber City has touched down in the penumbra around MIT. Was there anyone else that had information or anything to share on this? That's basically what's going on right now. It's uh, it's kind of unfolding. You've done an excellent job. And you'll be recognized at the moot for this quality work. Thank you. All right. Now, do we want to do any training times? Yes. All right. Once yes, please. So we'll figure that out after the session. And we'll figure out when this stuff starts back up. And now after that incredibly sensual and disgusting session, we can say that we'll see what happens to Fomori's Bane and the Ill Omens next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We'll catch you in that next episode. Bye. 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 Catch you then. Bye.